الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. Then that brings us, my brothers and sisters, to the day of Eid. The day of Eid, which is the day of slaughtering, the day of Nahr, which is the slaughtering of the camels. Because the camels are slaughtered with the slaughtering from the upper part of their neck. So this is why when the slaughtering of the camel, it is referred to as Nahar. And it is the day of Adha. And it is the day that is also referred to as the day wherein the Udhiya is performed. The sacrifice is performed. It is the day of Adha. Because the slaughtering is performed at the time of Duha, which is after Fajr, and it is after the Eid prayer it is performed. So it is the day of Adha, it is the day of Nahar, it is the day wherein the people that they slaughter for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they sacrifice not because the meat reaches Allah, not because the blood reaches Allah. These are not paganistic and polytheistic practices. It is because as Allah has mentioned in the Quran, it is not the meat that reaches Allah. It is not the blood that reaches Allah. Rather, it is the taqwa that reaches Allah. Meaning that it is your obedience to Allah and your piety that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking of you for your own benefit. And Allah loves that He is glorified. And Allah loves that He is praised. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has upon the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indicated an obligation for the sacrifice. As occurs in a hadith reported by Al-Hakim and Ibn Majah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he who has the capacity to sacrifice but does not do so then let him not come near our musalla. Let him not come near our prayer area. And the prayer area, the musalla, Yawmul Eid, is not in the masajid, of course. It is out in an open area where the Muslims will gather and that they will pray the Eid prayer as is the habit of the Muslims in the time of the Prophet ﷺ and after that. So here the Prophet ﷺ said that whomsoever had the capability but they did not sacrifice, then let them not come near our musalla. So that indicates as Imam al-Shawkani rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in Majmu'ah, in Majmu'ah al-Fatawa. And likewise, Shaykh al-Albani, rahimahullah, rahimahullah, that the sacrifice on the day of Eid, or the three days of Tashriq that come after that, that it is an obligation. So a group of the scholars, they held it to be, oblig- to be obligatory. And that's why we find the hadith of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reported by Abu Dawud and Imam al-Tirmidhi. Every year he said, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, ala kulli ahli baytin fi kulli amin udhiya. Shaykh al-Albani mentioned that the narration is sahih. Every year each household, O people, every year upon each household, there is for them a sacrifice that is to be performed. The udhiya, referring to Eid al-Adha. My brothers and sisters, at the very least, what the scholars agree upon is that it is something that is mashru'ah, something that is legislated. At the very least, even if they differ with regard to its obligation or its recommendation, at the very least, it is something that is legislated by the Lord of the worlds. In following the example of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he said to his son, Oh my son, I saw, meaning that I saw in a dream, a revelation from Allah, that I am to sacrifice to you. So what do you think? So Ismail, he said, he said, Oh my father, do that which you have been commanded to do. For indeed you will find me nothing other than patient, inshallah. So he took his son and he placed him on his side upon his forehead, about to sacrifice him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the glad, glad tidings that he is not, that he has been successful in fulfilling the command and not to continue with the sacrifice. And Allah replaced it with a great ram. So following in those footsteps of taqwa, it is not the blood and it is not the flesh and it is not the meat that reaches Allah, but rather it is the obedience of Allah as is proven 
by that which occurred with Ibrahim alayhi salam that Allah wanted him to obey him wanted piety wanted righteousness from Ibrahim and Ibrahim fulfilled it and in the end he did not sacrifice except a ram in the place of Ismail alayhi salam many of the scholars and most of the scholars and most of the sahaba radiyallahu anhum considered the sacrifice on Eid al-Adha or upon the three days that follow to be something recommended. As has been reported by Al-Bayhaqi and Shaykh Al-Bani mentioned in Al-Irwa that it is Sahih that Abu Surayha Al-Ghafari he said that I met both Abu Bakr and Umar. I reached them both. And they, would, and they did not offer the Udhiyah fearing that the people would follow them meaning that they would regard it to be an obligation. So the majority of Ahlul Ilm do not regard it to be obligatory. But nevertheless, you can see my brothers and sisters, the great virtue of the one who performs the sacrifice such that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say in a hadith reported by Ahmed, Abu Dawood, At-Tirmidhi, Shaykh Al-Bani rahimahullah declared it to be sahih in which he said, Bismillah, Wallahu Akbar, Hada anni wa an man lam yuddahhi min ummati. He said, Bismillah, and Allahu Akbar, this is on my behalf, O oh Allah, and, in beha- and on behalf of those of my followers who did not sacrifice. So he would sacrifice, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for himself, and on behalf of the ummah who are incapable of being able to sacrifice. And there's much that can be said about the sacrifice itself. But needless to say, that you should sacrifice an animal with halal that is halal, with wealth that is halal, with mal that is halal. And tayyib, good earnings, halal earnings. You should sacrifice an animal that is free from, from defects such as blindness. And free from being crippled. And free from being emaciated. An animal that looks noble and strong. From sheep, goat, ram, cow or camel. A camel that is shared between seven families, seven households. A cow that can be shared between seven households. A goat for one household. A ram for one household. A sheep for one household. So slaughter my brothers and sisters on the day of Eid. And the Prophet ﷺ used to eat from the meat, so do not send it abroad. Do not pay any attention to these billboards that are gathering your wealth to send the animal abroad. And to sacrifice abroad. No. The sacrifice the Prophet ﷺ did not send his wealth to Yemen for the sacrifice to be done there. He did not send his wealth to Mecca or to Damascus or to another part where the poor people they lived. Rather the Prophet ﷺ, he sacrificed himself. He ate from the meat and then he gave some to his relatives, his neighbors. And then he gave some to the poor. The sunnah, barakallahu feekum, is to slaughter in the land that you are living in and to eat from the slaughtered meat. So the Prophet, sallallahu look at the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu he used to leave on the day of Eid, not eating anything in his house, pray the Eid prayer, offer the slaughter, and then eat from the meat. This is the sunnah. How are you going to do that when you send it to you know, somewhere a thousand miles away. How are you going to do that? If you want to give sadaqah overseas, then send sadaqah. Send your wealth. But fulfill the sunnah of the sacrifice in this country. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us and from you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endow us with piety and righteousness in these days that are coming before us. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een.